Okay, okay. I've had several people tell me that my hacking style is a bit inefficient now, and for good reasons. Whether it's because of my choice to use low-level ice wall, or my choice to not use shocker, or generally my low-level beam cannon relative to people who upgraded pure beam cannon, they're all very good points. And there is a reason why I got myself into a situation like this. And that's because if you look at my earlier videos, I was actually in the business of keeping my reputation low. So I was sort of like a big fish in a small pond, if you will, because my programs at that level was more than enough to take down well, pretty much everyone who I had to hack, even against people who are much higher level than me. And I haven't actually read a lot of guides back then. Back then I was pretty much just analyzing the replays and going off based on my own intuition of what should be good and what should be bad. And from that, I was able to determine that upgrading the sentry was one thing to do. But since everybody I hacked was so easy not to be rude or anything, but that's what basically led me to not focus so much on the beam cannon. Because for one, stealth was actually really good at the low levels. Against people who are higher level than me, all I need to do was just wraith their sentry, and there we go, it's all solved. But now, the scanner scales much faster than stealth, so my levels that I put into stealth were pretty much wasted. Because my initial thought was, I can level stealth, so then I can always wraith their sentry, but clearly that's not the case, since you can just upgrade the scanner way easier. Secondly, I was also really scared of the code gate, right? That's why I upgraded the blaster, because it seemed like the blaster was a really good option against the code gate. And maybe to some extent that is correct, but at the same time, that's putting more levels into a program, and I'm sort of becoming a jack of all trade as opposed to actually focusing on something important like I have been doing with the sentry. And similarly, upgrading the shocker when I didn't really need it, when I could be putting levels into something else. Or upgrading the shuriken or upgrading the worm, which I never even use. And these are definitely all things that have set me behind. And it's definitely something that I realized. So I looked at the wiki, and I found out something. Basically, at level 21 beam cannon, it does a damage per second of 173. And that's equivalent to a level 11 blaster. So, instead of actually leveling the blaster and the beam cannon sort of side by side, I can actually level my beam cannon all the way to level 21, and then I can level the blaster. Because only once I reach level 21 on the beam cannon does it actually make sense for me to start leveling the blaster, because that's when the beam cannon reaches its well, maximum potential, I guess, and the blaster can actually take over and go even higher when I really need it. But yeah. People are saying, until then, I don't really need to level the blaster because I'm essentially dividing my attention between two programs, and it's much more worth it to focus on one, and it definitely makes sense. So that's why I'm changing things up. I'm not going to level the blaster anymore for quite a while. Instead, I put my Evolver to level 8. I've upgraded my Bitcoin Mixer a few times, and I'm still working on upgrading it. And I'm basically going to focus mostly on the Beam Cannon, as well as the protector. And the reason I choose the protector instead of say something like, well, the ice wall or the shocker is also for a similar reason. So I'm at level eight right now and I can go up to level 10 protector. Now with level 10 protector, the regeneration rate is actually better than two level 16s uh, antivirus hitting me at the same time. So against the three choke point nodes, like the scanner, all I need to do is to put on the one protector and then two beam cannon, and if it takes down one node really quickly, then the other two node, I would actually outheal the antivirus DPS. And so we can see a pretty immediate benefit for upgrading the protector, whereas my shocker is such a low level that I'm gonna have to put in way more effort to upgrade the shocker. But I only need to put in maybe two levels into the protector before everything is good. Now, I was also asked, why don't I use the ice wall? And again, I think the reason is still obvious is it's just not worth it. So if you look at this chart, I actually plotted, well not plotted, but calculated how long the ice wall would last against three nodes with the given level sentry. So at the top is the sentry level, as well as the damage per second of one node. And on the left, is how much buffer size the ice wall has at each particular level. 
So I'm assuming three nodes, only the antivirus. I'm not accounting for the security node damage right now. So this is only for the DPS of three node, three antivirus only. So on this spreadsheet, the cells highlighted in red are the levels where I'm going to need at least two ice walls. And the cells highlighted in yellow are ones that in theory I can do with only one ice wall, but maybe I need two just in case because it's really cutting it close. And the ones that are in white are ones that I'm sure that I can handle with only a single ice wall. And this is of course to set up the protector, which takes four seconds. So I am missing data for level 13 and level 14 ice wall, but that's not important. But basically you can see from here that I would essentially have to go up to maybe level 10 ice wall in order to be sure that I can set up on a level 16 sentry with only the one ice wall. Whereas compared to the shocker, with a level 10 shocker, I actually have 7.5 seconds of freeze duration. So that's pretty much guaranteed I've set up the protector either way. And that's not to mention that a level 10 shocker is 180 B coin, whereas a level 10 ice wall is 240 B coins. So we can see from both this chart and just looking at the cost that the ice wall isn't really worth it. And the other thing is a lot of the time with the ice wall, I only want to use it for maybe the 495 buffer for size, and I don't actually want to use the whole 1000 buffer size. Because most of the times I kind of throw it on every single node, and the beam can handle the rest, but the extra 495 NTA, well, buffer size is what makes the difference between keeping it up or it dropping. So with that in mind, the 100 buffer size is actually overkill for a lot of the nodes. So if I were to upgrade the ice wall, I would actually be wasting a lot of B coins because a lot of the nodes where I only need one ice wall, even at level two right now, I would automatically be putting on a level 10 ice wall, which is double the effect and I don't even need it. Now, granted, there probably are some benefits to a high level ice wall eventually, but in the immediate future, I'm not seeing that much of a benefit, and that's why I am going to upgrade the Shocker as soon as I, well, level the Protector up a bit more. And for now, I can still kind of get away with a spamming Ice Wall, because I only need, if you look at this chart, maybe two or three Ice Walls against the level 16 Sentry. So once I start hitting level 21 Sentry, where I probably need like five or six Ice Wall, then it's definitely worth it for me to use the Shocker instead. Because if you look at the shocker stats, it takes up a 6 disk space. So in terms of disk space, it's equivalent to 3 ice walls. So if I have to go up to 4 ice walls, then switching the shocker is definitely worth it in terms of disk space efficiency. And in terms of compilation time, if I ignore the fact that I have 4 compilation slots, then using more than 4 ice walls, it's equivalent to having 1 shocker. So the shocker is definitely coming, just not yet. But it's something that definitely is in the future. And once again, to reiterate, the plan is to upgrade my beam cannon all the way to level 21 because that's equivalent to a level 11 blaster. And obviously it's way easier to install three beam cannons than it is to install three blasters. So by having a level 21 beam cannon, it's essentially the same as having three level 11 blaster, but only for one sixth of the disc space. The only thing I will be losing, I suppose, is well, the disable effect from the blaster. But that's also another good reason why I want to upgrade the protector, because if the protector is strong enough, then I might not even need a disable effect. And if the beam cannon is strong enough, then I might be able to just take down the node with, before I even need a disable effect. So it kind of works all together. So I'm really seeing a lot of potential in the beam cannon plus protector combination right now, with shocker on the horizon, just not yet. So if you're more experienced than me, then correct me if I'm wrong but this is what it looks like to be the best option for it going forwards. Of course, I will be a bit behind compared to people who have done this right from the start, but I don't think that's a really good reason to just restart the whole thing. After all, you have to be good and adapt your strategy accordingly anyways. You can't just restart every time something comes up, right? Oh, so all that talk about upgrading my programs, I actually forgot that I have the level 10 core. So that means I actually get two new nodes, which is pretty interesting. So what I actually get is an extra black ice and an extra scanner. Now, the scanner can hurt. It's, well, pretty much it's a really good choke point. So definitely gonna go for the scanner and it will actually allow me to make my network more like a Oblace network that I looked at in the last episode. So yeah, gonna get the scanner, that's for sure. 
Now, having another black ice can't hurt, and it might even seem like the obvious choice. But then again, if you take a look at my network structure, you'll see that I don't really have a good place to put the black ice. And not to mention it's going to be a level 1 black ice, so it doesn't really matter since I'm going to be upgrading my sentry. So other than maybe putting it, well, extending it more back here, I have one more slot for each of these nodes, or maybe extending these two nodes a bit more, there's no real good place to add another black ice. So instead, I actually also get an extra database in the Bcoin mixer. Now, the database in Bcoin mixer, if you haven't noticed, actually has four slots, but only three program slots. So it's almost the same as the level one scanner. The only difference is that the level one Bcoin mixer has, I think, 20 more firewall. Yeah, 20 more firewall than the scanner. So it's effectively just the same concept as a level one scanner. Also, note that we only need two of each storage in order to go to endgame. You don't need more than two databases and you don't need more than two Bcoin mixer to get pretty much everything in the game. So this is a perfect opportunity to use one of these storages as a choke point and just leave it at level one. Because right now my network could definitely benefit more from having a choke point then they could benefit from having an extra black ice, which will only be kept at level one. Now, the Bcoin mixer and the database are pretty much identical, and the extra amount of storage they give is not gonna be significant ever. So it doesn't really matter which one I get, it's more about, well, the aesthetics and which one you prefer. And for me, I prefer the Bcoin mixer, so I'm just gonna get that. Because obviously, the spear is superior to the cylinder. So I just added two good choke points to my network, and you already know, or you maybe can already guess where I want to put it. And that's going to be in place of these two choke points, which are actually not that good since they're not level one and they only have three connection slots. So now I can attach the scanner and the level one Bcoin mixer to the code gate instead. Now, the question is, how should I distribute my storages? After all, I can only attach three to the scanner or the Bcoin mixer. So I am gonna have one storage kind of just hanging there. But I think ultimately the placement doesn't really matter, mainly because you want them to attack the storage first anyways. Because if they were to attack the farm first, they're gonna take it down really easily and you're just gonna lose them as potential antivirus attackers. So you're gonna want them to target the storage regardless. So it doesn't really matter what order you put them in, I believe. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put one database and both Bcoin mixers onto the first choke point, and then the remaining database and the farms onto the other choke point. And now, if they do make it to my resources, they're gonna have an even harder time than before, because now they'll be taking damage from three sources as opposed to only two, but the amount of programs they can use hasn't really changed at all. And this is a level 16 sentry, so they're gonna need a pretty high level protector as well to deal with that. Okay, that was a pretty math heavy episode. So let's end off by taking a look at some of my hacks, which showcases, well, my new protector, the level eight protector. So against level 41, John the Ripper, who has a black sentry, is the first case where the level eight protector really seems to have a pretty big effect. Now, because of my, well, I've been saying that I've been running out of time, and that could partially be because of the beam cannon thing that I was talking about earlier. But because of that, I've been having to use stealth a bit more when people have these triple high level code grade things. But hopefully I can just stop doing that very soon once I get my beam cannon upgraded like I was planning to. Anyhow, these two wraith does save me a lot of time since I was able to get through two code gates in 15 seconds. Now I still do use the double blaster in order to stun off the code gate so it increases the DPS and lets me put on the beam cannon that's supposed to be the ice wall. So overall, it gets through it much faster, but even so, it's still pretty slow. And you can see that's why I want to make sure that I get the beam cannon up, so that maybe I don't even have to deal with the blaster, since the blaster does take a pretty long to compile. And if I can get three beam cannons that are just as good as, well, three blasters, then even better. So here, all I had to do was to use the three ice walls to set up the protector, use the one shocker, and then blaster plus beam cannon. And we can see that the level eight protector is much stronger because this is a black sentry, mind you, and these are, 
I don't know, they're high level turrets. I don't know what level they actually are, but they're definitely not the low level turret that I have. So they have an effect too. But with the level 8 sentry and the one, well not the level 8 sentry, level 8 protector and the one shocker, we saw that I was able to just get through here a lot quicker than I have before where I had the older protector. And because of that, I'm actually quite ahead of schedule. In fact, I raised the Koke because I was afraid that I wouldn't make it on time. But instead, I'm actually here with a whole minute to spare. So I'm sort of just relaxing, just put on protector on both nodes and just went ahead with beam cannons. And this is a level 41 player and he doesn't have bad defense. He's not like a farmer. He has high level turrets and high level sentry. So hopefully from this, you can see why I've been saying that leveling the protector would also make things go faster because I don't have to use as many ice walls on the protector. So I would actually have two slots dedicated to attacking at all times as opposed to only one. Another good example was against, I think, level 41, not hacker one. And he actually has a lot of reputation. That's why I got plus nine from him. And he also has the black sentry and some decently high level turret. So again, not one of those intense farmers. Although he did level his farm a bit. Uh, well, actually, maybe that's not a bit. That seems like quite a lot. But anyhow, he only has one farm. So I would say a good amount of his level did come from defenses, not so much from purely farms. Now, his level definitely could be lower, but there's only so much you can really do. Anyhow, I did race the two Kogate again, because like I said, I am trying to save some time, since time is still a concern, and that's why I really want to make sure I get the beam cannon up. So here, against this Kogate, once it has the, well, I don't know what they call it, the circle thing in the middle, that's when I have to start worrying about using the double blaster combination with the stun lock, which is good, but as I've been saying, not really sustainable because two blasters are pretty space expensive and completion expensive, so that's why I want to replace them with the beam cannon as soon as possible. But anyhow, here we see that with the black sentry and the double black ice, which are, well, decently leveled, I think. Not too sure what exactly what they are. I was once again just able to go through with the one beam cannon plus one blaster plus one shocker combination. Now, his black ice definitely seems to have an effect because I guess black ices are kind of made to destroy protectors or something, at least by the looks of it. So I had to use one ice wall, but only one. And from here on out, it was just beam cannon ice wall against the black sentry. So if this keeps up, then by the time I level 10, I'll be able to just do this against the gold sentry. And that will be a pretty big difference. Because if I can do this against the goat sentry, then I don't really have to worry about a lot of things anymore. And that means hacking a goat sentry player is just going to be just as easy as hacking, well, any other player, which is what I want. Because the thing is, a lot of the people right now are actually pretty poor, and the only rich people are ones with goat sentry, so there are also definitely a lot of incentive for me to make sure that I don't fall behind in my attacking power since I want to be able to make sure that I can hack everyone, since that's where a lot of the money is right now. It's not so much in the farmer anymore, and I guess that might partially be because of my high reputation. But it's no excuse to step down in reputation just because I'm having difficulty. It's only an excuse to get better. All right, that's it for this episode. Sorry if there was too much math for your taste, but I think a bit of math now and then is good. Make sure that I am doing the right thing. Not just based on what I think, but also based on what I can prove, so to speak. But anyhow, I think after this, I'm probably going to go and continue leveling the sentry. I just upgraded this one storage because I want to make sure that I can go ahead and upgrade the beam pen to level 14 after I am done leveling it to level 13. So once this is done tomorrow, I will be able to upgrade the storage, which will allow me to get the level 17 sentry. So if you liked this episode, then please remember to leave a like and subscribe. And thank you for watching. See you next time.